Major League Baseball's Stand Up to Cancer initiative. It's the 10th annual event. Tori Lovello is actively involved in uh, fighting cancer, finding research to cure it, and we're really thrilled to have him on with us. This is really neat, man. Good for you. Are you looking forward to this? Whoever wins this? Uh what can I say? I Here love the basketball. Shoot a couple Jays. Let's let's get this thing moving. Let's I go. I love it. Very yeah. good. Uh, and this is going on. It's an online auction at MLB.com slash winter meetings auction live until December 7th, which is coming up. You know, up Troy, during the World Series, the uh, Suns are playing, and the building's like three-minute walk. So they're playing San Antonio. I got a chance to go over and see the big guy play. That was so fun to be that close. I'll tell you what. Yeah, it's right next door. Uh, we have a very good relationship with the Phoenix Suns um, and the basketball community. And the fact that they came out and you see, um, you know, KD there and Book there, you know, we're like little kids. When we see them walking around and they're sitting down cheering for us, we're like, well, this is pretty cool. They're here to watch us play in a World Series. I love it. Yeah. Hey, congratulations on Thank everything. Let me be the millionth person to do that yeah. uh, and say that to you. But uh, I would imagine for you and for Mike, and we're going to have Mike Hazen on a little bit later on, being there as a team for so long, and you're entering your eighth season already. Where did that go? I'm sure you say that all the time. To build up and have it culminate the way it did with a World Series appearance, it has to be one of the most gratis gratifying things you've ever been around. Totally agree. You know, you lose 110 games two years ago. Um, we felt very strongly about the, the commitment of this organization with the players that we had inside of it, that we can, if we continue to do things at the right way, the right level, with the right energy, that it was going to turn. Um, you know, I, to be honest with you, I have to be very optimistic every spring training, uh, pushing that boat in the right direction, pushing that train in the right direction. I feel like we always have a World Series opportunity in front of us. but. You know, this, this probably came a little bit quicker than a lot of people realize. And the way it happened was we played as a team. We played as one. We got a lot of really good, young, hungry baseball players that mixed in with some veterans, with some quality pitching. It was just a great moment for this organization and a great run that we made. I, I love the fact that uh, the style you played and the rules. Once the rules were changed, did you feel like, hey, with the team that we put together, we're kind of ahead of everybody? Did you feel that way? A little bit. Don't let, when Mike comes on here, don't let him tell you that he drafted these players knowing that the rule <laughs> changes would happen. It's not true. He's going to lie to you if he tells you that that's the case. Um, no, you know what? We, we want to take advantage of our athleticism. And I always try to manage the team that I have. And sometimes, you know, you got big boppers. You're going to let the boppers go out there and play the game. Uh, but this particular team had been raised in our system um, with an understanding of the fundamental of baseball. So player development deserves a ton of credit. By the time they got to, to the big league level, these boys were ready to play baseball every single day, and it showed up. There's such a balance between uh, putting expectations out there that are too big, overhyping somebody, and still presenting them with an opportunity to be good. Your own experiences as a player, and we talked to Dave Martinez about this, Sparky loved you, as we all remember, and you were going to be that guy. How much of that experience impacts how you manage your young guys? Uh, it, it's very, it's, it's right here. It's right here because it put a lot of pressure on me, and I didn't want to let my baseball father, Sparky Anderson, down with some of the things that he was saying. And I put extra pressure on myself, and this game is already hard enough. So I, I, can, I can temper those, those expectations with our young players, but I certainly feel like the sky's the limit for our younger group. And um, I talk about focusing on today. You know, you talk about Corbin Carroll, who had a tremendous year, and everybody was hyping him as the rookie of the year yeah. for 2023. He did it, and he was. But he never looked beyond today. His, I know what his focus is. It's day by day. And that's kind of what I've learned through my, my experiences with Sparky putting those expectations on me. It was a lot for me to manage as a 23-year-old. And you got to remember, these are young kids out there. They just hold, want to play hold, and have hold fun. on. Sparky didn't just put expectations on him. <laughs> Sparky came from the big red machine, went to Detroit, had Trammell, Whitaker, Gibson, and said, this is a great, oh, after having all those guys, no, oh, most yeah. people don't know that. But yeah. I want to make it clear. After having the, some of the greatest players we've ever seen in baseball history, saying this guy's going to be the best I've ever seen. Oh, Holy yeah. smokes. What that was, was that like? That was heavy. That was a big burden. That, that I felt that, and at the time I'm like, yeah, okay. But I knew deep down that Lou Whitaker and Alan Trammell were, were studs, and, and Gibby, these guys were unbelievable. And, you know, I, I appreciated what he was trying to do. I think now that I'm sitting here and I realize that I'm the manager of younger players, on a, of, you know, the Arizona Diamondbacks manager, 
I I knew what he was trying to do. He was trying to pump me up a little bit and make me believe Man, I was better than We I was. were like, I can't wait to see this guy play. And every pitcher was like, I can't wait to get him out. Yeah. I mean, think I about what you had to go from. And, and it worked. They all got me out. I think I had 110 for the first two months of the season. I got I mean, sent down to the minors. Rough, man. Hey, That's we all, rough. We all want to know about going back to the World Series. And, I, you know, I guess it's been there's been plenty of time for you to go back and think about every move and every result. We all want to know about the calculus of of – canvas for your starting pitchers. I mean, Brandon Fought was absolutely electric. He was such a star. It was so much fun to watch a kid who had struggled early in the season come up and dominate when the lights were the brightest. Uh, but you guys had your plan and you had your calculus already set. How do you now that the thing is over, how do you look back on those decisions and all that? Well, it worked. You know, we came three wins away. We were three wins away from being a world champion. We got into the big dance, and um, I, I've got to continue to grow and learn. And, and look, I took Brandon Fott out of a game after 42 pitches and four and two thirds. That, that that'll never happen again in his career. I just know what happened the third time around to Brandon Fott. He's going to outgrow that. He's going to be able to go three, you know, definitely three plus times around that that uh, that lineup but I figured it was 18 batters plus or minus three and that's what I said for the month of September and then we had a shutdown bullpen you know you got us into that sixth inning right that five that five five plus area like we were we were going to beat you and we had a really good bullpen that took it over and and fought understood that you know and I explained it to him afterwards I said I promise you Brandon I'm not going to treat you like this every day of your career every fifth day when you come out you're going to get the baseball for 80 90 100 pitches I promise it'll they'll get better see that's the stuff that we 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 love hearing about right because yeah. When you make a decision like that and then there's questions at the end of the game and they sound a little rude when you're home watching it, uh, you feel for you, you feel for the kid, but the fact that you had that conversation afterwards kind of makes everybody feel good. Like, I get it. Yeah, and I just was trying to be transparent with Brandon. And, look, the, the front office did not come in and say, do this, 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 and this, and this. It wasn't scripted. It was a conversation that I had with myself, with my staff, with the pitching coach, Brent Strom. We all felt very strongly about this. And at the end of the day, we could have flipped the script. If the score was 9-1 to one and he was at 42 pitches, of course he would have kept going. But with the game in the balance and some very critical points coming up, we knew what we had to do to win the baseball game, and it was time to turn it over. Hey, hey, let me ask you this, too. When, when, when you're sitting here and you got all these young players and you're developing and all that stuff, and they're going through what they're going through, were there times you had to call them in the office and just sit them down and say, hey, you're going to be okay? Yeah, that's, I do that probably two or three times a day on the low side with every player at all times. So, um, you know, they know they come in, they sit in the one seat. Um, I, I don't sit behind my desk. I get over, sit right next to them in a, in a chair very similar to theirs, kind of get on their level, and we just hammer out where they're at. And it's not just when they're struggling, too. It's when they're going well, and I just want to tell them, like, you're doing things right, keep going, stay hungry, and stay committed. So. I love those moments. That's that's my favorite time and my favorite part yeah. of being a manager is one on one with these players, basically every single day. And I don't pick or choose. I have I have an agenda that I'm going through when, before I go to sleep. I want to sit down and talk to player A or player B, and then there's a few surprises the next day. But I love that part of my day. So what was the airplane flight like? You've been watching the Phillies demolish people. Yeah. The crowd is crazy. That was like everybody's pick because of how well they were playing. And then you're getting ready to go to Philadelphia. What was the playing conversation and when you played in that ballpark and that arena to beat them? Yeah, I think there was a little bit of anxiety. We saw what they did to the Braves. They basically manhandled one of the best best teams in baseball, period. That's the Braves. And, uh, you know, when we were going back there for games six and seven, I, I think I said it in my in a press conference. We weren't we weren't going cr have our, uh, cross country, get our butts kicked. We were going there to play some hardball. You did say that. It was yeah. an awesome line, by the way. Yeah, and our guys our guys backed me up, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I, I could have looked great with my comment or looked like an, a dope with our comments. And like, like I said, boys picked me up. So but last thing before you go, here you are. Previously unchartered territory, pennant winning manager, your rubber chicken circuit got a lot more complicated and the calendar is filled with these command performance events such as appearing with the great Christopher Russo oh, at the God. Sons of Italy event last week <laughs> or whatever with the Italian American Baseball Hall of Fame. Here he is talking with his hands. B beside the fact that his last name is Russo, I had no idea he was Italian, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> no idea. <laughs>
<laughs> That's right. That was a great event. The IABF was. A, well, uh, they, they put so many great uh, young athletes into the next level, pushing baseball, and that's what we all do. We're all teachers of baseball, but it was great. Mad Dog and I, we buried the hatchet. He made a couple of nice donations to my charity. Um, that's my boy. There uh, we go. We're, there we're, we we're go. all set uh, your up. Your social media team was so good all postseason long, calling everybody out. It was so much fun. Tori, thanks for the visit, man. Congrats on a great year. All right, I appreciate the time, guys.